You are cruising along and then technology changes. You have to adapt. Mark Andreessen I've just gotten used to using a new social media application on my phone. It's fantastic. I'm on vacation taking pictures on my phone and posting them to my personal account. All my family and friends are commenting real time on how nice the places I am visiting look and commenting, very nice, can't wait to hear all about it. It feels so different from my trip the year before when I carried my 35mm digital camera around my neck, snapping all kinds of pictures, making sure I brought an extra SD card so I could save all my pictures. This time I left the camera at home, used my phone for everything, and shared my experience real-time with family and friends. Six months later, while planning my next vacation, I noticed a picture I took on a travel website. Hey, those are my children in the picture. How did that travel website get my picture? Who said they could use my picture to advertise their travel services? How did that happen? New social media applications seem to emerge daily. Our friends tell us to try this new app, and just when we get used to using one app, everyone seems to jump to a new one, making the one I just learned obsolete. And worse yet, I'm using this new thing, and I'm not entirely aware of how my data will be shared or used. How do we keep pace with technological change? How do we conceive what this change will bring as we begin this investigation, let's set boundaries. What is technology and what is change? Let's start with technology. While there are many definitions of technology, for this course, let's use this definition of technology. The use of science and in industry, engineering, etc. to invent useful things or to solve problems. And how about change? Let's go with this simple definition for change. To become different. Okay, these definitions appear easy enough, but I don't know that these two definitions will be enough to help me assess the questions raised by my vacation experience. Let's add two more ideas to the equation to establish foundational questions around technological change, assessing change, and issues around any technology. Let's go back to my vacation example. I learned this new mobile app for taking pictures on my phone and how to share the photos on the internet, real time, with family and friends. The creator of the app provided guided help to show me through the app how to use it and how to share my photos. The app had lots of features. The app developer designed the app with the intention of helping people use their phone to take pictures, change them, and post the pictures to the internet for easy sharing. Let's consider these actions by the developer as intentional. My use of the app and my satisfaction with the ease of use of the app is a consequence of the app's development. Let's consider my use of the app and its features as intended consequences of the technology. Restated, the way I use the app is the way the developer intended it. But how about that travel agency copying my picture without my permission and using it for their own financial gain? What will we call that action? Copyright infringement? Illegal? Unethical? Something else? I'm sure that the developer of the social media application did not create it with the intention that the travel agency or anyone else would use it to break the law or harm others. Let's consider the unauthorized and possibly illegal act by the travel site, an unintended consequence of the social media application. Technology by itself changes all the time, but when does the change really have an impact on society? In his book, The Innovators, Walter Isaacson suggests that the real digital revolution occurred with the invention of the transistor. Isaacson writes, The invention of computers did not immediately launch a revolution. Because they relied on large, expensive, 
fragile vacuum tubes that consumed a lot of power, the first computers were costly behemoths that only corporations, research universities, and military could afford. Instead, the true birth of the digital age, the era in which electronic devices became embedded in every aspect of our lives, occurred in Murray Hill, New Jersey, shortly after lunchtime on Tuesday, December 16, 1947. That day, two scientists at Bell Labs succeeded in putting together a tiny contraption that they had concocted from some strips of gold foil, a chip of semiconducting material, and a bent paper clip. When wiggled just right, it could amplify an electric current and switch it on and off. The transistor, as the device was soon named, became, to the digital age, what the steam engine was to the Industrial Revolution. An experimentalist named Walter Brayton, a quantum theorist named John Bardeen, and a solid-state physics expert named William Shockley have been credited with inventing the transistor. But what was the change in impact on society that the invention of the transistor created? Isaacson writes, more fundamentally, the transistor radio became the first major example of a defining theme of the digital age, technology making devices personal. The radio was no longer a living room appliance to be shared. It was a personal device that allowed you to listen to your own music where and when you wanted, even if it was the music that your parents wanted to ban. Indeed, there was a symbiotic relationship between the advent of the transistor radio and the rise of rock and roll. Elvis Presley's first commercial recording, That's All Right, came out at the same time as the Regency Radio. The rebellious new music made every kid want a radio, and the fact that the radios could be taken to the beach or the basement, away from the disapproving ears and dial-controlling fingers of parents, allowed the music to flourish. The only regret I have about the transistor is its use for rock and roll, its co-inventor Walter Brayton often lamented, presumably half in jest. Roger McGuinn, who became the lead singer of The Birds, got a transistor radio for his 13th birthday in 1955. I heard Elvis, he recalled. It was a game changer for me. Shockley, Bardeen, and Brayton did not create the transistor radio, mass production of it, or a market for it. Others did. Isaacson continues, Innovation happens in stages. In the case of the transistor, first there was the invention, led by Shockley, Bardeen, and Brayton. Next came the production, led by engineers such as Thiel. Finally, and equally important, there were entrepreneurs who figured out how to conjure up new markets. Teal's plucky boss, Pat Haggerty, was a colorful case of this third step in the innovation process. Like Steve Jobs, Haggerty was able to protect a reality distortion field that he used to push people to accomplish things they thought impossible. Transistors were being sold in 1954 to the military for about $16 a piece. But in order to break into the consumer market, Haggerty insisted that his engineers find a way to make them so that they could be sold for less than $3. They did. He also developed a jobs-like knack which would serve him then and in the future for conjuring up devices that consumers did not yet know they needed but would soon find indispensable. In the case of the transistor, Haggerty came up with the idea of a small pocket radio. When he tried to convince RCA and other big firms that made tabletop radios to become a partner in the venture, they pointed out, rightly, that consumers were not demanding a pocket radio. But Haggerty understood the importance of spawning new markets rather than merely chasing old ones. He convinced a small Indianapolis company that built TV antenna boosters to join forces on what would be called the Regency TR1 radio. The advent of the transistor is just one example of technology and change. As we comb through the history of advances with technology, we can find dozens of examples similar to that of the transistor. What is also occurring is an accelerated rate of change due to advances. 
and consequences, both intentional and unintentional, change virtually as fast as technology. Depending on the technology, consequences can be minimal or enormous. We may not know all the consequences as the technological change goes mainstream. In her text, A Gift of Fire, Social, Legal, and Ethical Issues for Computing, Sarah Basset introduces us to a multitude of examples of technological change and an ever-accelerated rate of change. She reminds us that not all changes are bad, and many changes are actually gifts. Basset suggests in order to best understand, we need to look at change from not only the bad, but the good as well. All this change is good, correct? Maybe so, but can we really predict the consequences of a technological change? Dr. Mary Aiken, a forensic cyberpsychologist, studies human behavior online. In her book, The Cyber Effect, Aiken looks to explain why we do what we do online. She writes about the rate of change and the challenges it presents in terms of truly understanding consequences. Aiken suggests that research studies may not exist or be conducted before the effects of technological change occur. She writes, Time is not on my side. My work is always in a race with technology. This presents a major challenge to how academics normally study a phenomenon. As scientists, how can we possibly keep pace with the tech changes we are seeing in our lives, in our behavior, and in our society? A good longitudinal study, which looks at human behavior over time and allows a researcher to make conclusive scientific statements, can take anywhere from a couple of years to a few decades. That's several lifetimes in tech terms, and given what I've seen already, particularly the new norms that are rapidly being created, due to an accelerated form of socialization that I call cyber-socialization, I don't think we should sit around waiting for answers. Aiken paints a picture that challenges our traditional approaches to understanding change in human behavior. Her observations suggest there's a possibility for a widening gap between intended and unintended consequences of new technologies. As we jump into the issues of technology and computing, Let's consider technology, change, intended consequences, and unintended consequences, along with Isaacson, Basset, and Aiken's observations, and what it may all mean to us.